This screencast covers the material in Module 6, Lesson 3, where we name points using coordinate pairs and use coordinate pairs to plot points. I'm going to have to do an awful lot of freehand uh, with this, so it's not ideal. Uh, I expect my students to use straight edges. Uh, I just have not really figured out a good way to do this on my iPad. This material includes the problem set, uh, but that closely parallels what you'll see in your homework. Okay, I've uh, got our coordinate plane here that we need to look at, and uh, we'll work through a series of tasks using the coordinate plane that you see on the slide. The first task, A, tells us to construct an x-axis that passes through points A and B. Again, I would expect you to use a straight edge, and my students use straight edges, but I'm going to do the best I can to create a line that's reasonably straight going through points A and B and I'll label that X. Now it says construct a perpendicular Y axis that uh, passes through C and F. Again we'll do our best here going through C and F and we'll label that Y. The last task in this series of three says label the origin as zero. So we'll do that right there. So we have zero at the intersection of x, the x and y axes as the origin. Continuing with tasks D and E, it says the x coordinate of B is 5 and 2 thirds. Label the whole numbers along the x axis. So if we find that this is 5 and 2 thirds, we can presume that each one of these lines here represents one-third, and three-thirds is the same as one. So let's, uh, let's try that out. I'm going to start with uh, counting one, two, three, and that would be labeled one, another three, we'll label it two, another three, label it three, another three, label it four, another three, label it 5, and what we should find here is that if we start with 5 and go two more uh, intervals, we should have uh, 5 and 2 thirds and B, and indeed that is correct. Now we look at task E. It says the Y coordinate of C is 5 and 1 third. C is right there. Well, let's, uh, again, we have, uh, we can presume that these are thirds. I'll do the same thing I did. We'll make sure that this is correct. Uh, normally we have the same intervals for the X and Y axes, but there are some circumstances where that may not be the case. One, three uh, intervals, two, another three, intervals three, another three gives us four, and another three gives us five. And one more, yep, five and one-third. C is five and one-third. Now we go on to task 2A and B. It says identify all the points that have an x-coordinate of three and one-third. We'll, we'll go along the x-axis here. We'll find three and then one more. That's three and one-third. We'll now go vertically from that x-axis. You'll notice that this line is parallel to the y-axis. and We'll find all the points that are on this line. They all have the same x value of 3 and 1 third. So what are our answers? We have j, i, h, and d. Now we're going to part b. Identify all the points that have a y-coordinate of 2 and 2 thirds. Again, we'll look, go to 2, and then up 2 more of these intervals, 2 and 1 third, 2 and 2 thirds. We'll look along this line here, going horizontally. It is parallel, notice, to the x-axis, uh, referring to that for future lessons, and we'll give all those values. So we have F, E, H, and K. Task 2C says, which point is 3 and 1 third units above the x-axis and 2 and 2 thirds units to the right of the y-axis? Name the point and give the coordinate pair. 
Okay, let's take a look at this. We're uh, mixing things up a little bit. Uh, and we should be starting to notice a pattern that we'll see in this and future lessons. So I need 3 and 1 third above the x-axis. Here's the x-axis. And I need to go up, and we're going to be parallel to the x-axis as we go up. And notice that as we go up, it's not the x that changes, it's the y. So 3 and 1 third. So I'm going to look for 3 and 1 third, 3 and 1 third. Okay, this is the line formed by 3 and 1 third. We can see that point G is on that. And we want to go 2 and 2 thirds to the right of the uh, Y axis. So we're going to start the Y axis. We're going to go 2 and 2 thirds. And again, we have a G. So I'm going to write the answer G. And what do we notice about the values of this? Well, the, the uh, X axis for this is 2 and 2 thirds, the x value for this. And notice that if we have a point that is 2 and 2 thirds to the right of the y axis, that gives us the x value of the coordinate, and that is 2 and 2 thirds. And if we again look at the y coordinate here, we see that it is 3 and 1 third. And again, the uh, value of the point that is 3 and 1 third units above the x-axis is actually the y value for that coordinate or that point. Continuing with tasks 2D and E, it says which point is located 5 and 1 third units from the x-axis. So we're starting at the x-axis or excuse me, the y-axis, the y-axis is over here. And we want to go 5 and 1 third units away. So we're going to go this way. And the easiest way to measure that is going through the x-axis. So here I am 1 away, 1 unit away from the y, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 and 1 third. So I need to look at, for a point, along this vertical line that has an x value of 5 and 1 third and is 5 and 1 third units away from the y axis. And the answer, of course, is k. Which point is located 1 and 2 thirds units along the x axis? 1 and 2 thirds along. Notice that we're not saying from, we're saying along. So we're going to go to the x-axis. And we're going to go five, uh, 1 and 2 thirds along that. And now we're going to look at that vertical line once again. We're going to look for a point on this vertical line. And the answer is M. We need to pay close attention to words here. It's, uh, this stuff gets easily confusing, and that's why we set up these videos for you. Hopefully you will refer to these when you're doing your homework. Now we need to find the coordinate pair for each of the following points. So we're going to give an ordered pair, and those are in parentheses, uh, two values. One, first one is always x, second one is always y, and they're separated by a comma. Let's look for k. I'm going to find k on my coordinate plane. It's located right here. So I need to first find the x value. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to draw a line down to my a vertical line down to my x axis. And I see that I have a value of 5 and 1 third. So I'll start writing 5 and 1 third. Put in my comma. Now I need to find the value for y. So going back to k, I'm going to draw or trace a horizontal line to the y-axis, and I see I have 2 and 2 thirds. So my y-coordinate is 2 and 2 thirds. Let's do the same for i. Okay, there's i. Draw my line down to my vertical line down to my x-axis. I see 3 and 1 third. Now drawing a horizontal line from my i to the y-axis, I see 1 and 2 thirds. Continue with b. 
I find B. It's directly on my x-axis. So if I go along my x-axis, I see that it is 5 and 2 thirds. And any point that's on the x-axis has a value of 0 for y because we don't go up at all. It's at this point 0 if I draw my horizontal line. Uh, so my coordinate, my ordered pair for this or coordinate pair is 5 and 2 thirds and 0. Finally, C. And again, we see that C is on one of the axes. It's on the y-axis this time. And we have a value of 0 if I take my point C make my vertical line, I intersect my x-axis at 0. Put in my comma. And going on to my y-axis, I really can't draw a horizontal line, but I see that it is located on 5 and 1 third on the y-axis. In this slide, we have task 2G. And instead of uh, finding uh, the ordered pair, we're given the ordered pair. We need to find the points. Let's look at the first one. We have an x coordinate of 1 and 2 thirds and a y of 2 thirds. So I'm going to go to my x axis, go to 1 and 2 thirds. And then I need to go up or uh, two-thirds, or I can look at my y-axis and go here and find the intersection of these with my vertical and horizontal lines, and I see that it is point M. Zero and two-thirds along my x-axis, I get zero, so I am right on my y-axis someplace if my x value is zero. So zero, two and two-thirds, so we'll go up one, two, and 2 and 1 third, 2 and 2 thirds, the value is F. This time I have a value of 1 for my X coordinate and 0 for my Y. So I am going to go along my X axis to 1. And I'm not going to go up at all. So if I draw that horizontal line, I'm at 0 here. That's 0, 1. And that is point A. Finally, 2 for X and 5 and 2 thirds. Again, We'll go 2, and we'll go up 5 and 2 thirds, or I can look at it this way, go up 5 and 2 thirds on my x-axis, and at my 2 and my y, I find the intersection of those two, and I am at point N. Task 2, H, and I. First it asks, which point has an equal x and y coordinate? That means they're the same value. So, for example, uh, if I had uh, the same x and y, I would have 1, 1, 2, 2. So there's 1, 1, and uh, 2, and 2. And again, I'd have 3 and 3. And if we notice, we're kind of making a diagonal line that goes straight through these points here. And I'm going to go up to 4 and 4, and 5 and 5. And again, we'll notice this diagonal line going right through the uh, center, really, in some ways, of this coordinate plane here. And we see that L lies on that line. We have a value of 5 and 5, or 5x, five 5y. Five so we would uh, write L in this place. It says give the coordinates for the intersection of the two axes. And that is right here. We have x intersecting y at this point here, and the coordinates for that are 0 for x, 0 for y. It has a special name called the origin with an i. Now we're to plot some points on our coordinate plane given a pair of uh, values or a coordinate pair. So let's look at p. We have 4 and 1 fourth for x and 4 for y. So we're going to go through our x-axis. We're going to find 4 or excuse me, 4 and 1 third. So I am going to plot something along this line right here, 4 and 1 third. Now I need to look for my y coordinate, that's 4. So I need to plot something along this line. And we look for the intersection of 4 and 1 third and 4. So we're right there. So now we're going to take that, 4 and 1 third, and 4. We'll plot a point there, and I'll label it P. Go on to the next one, one third, one sixth. 
and one third along the X, one third and six rather, and we need to go up along this line until we get to six. I didn't label six, but we can see that one, two, three, six is right there. So one third and six. Label that point Q. We'll uh, write in our sixes here now. All right, let's go to R, four and two thirds along the x-axis, four and two thirds. So we're along this vertical line right here, and one along this horizontal line here. We find the intersection of that four and one third and one right here. We'll plot the point and uh, write the letter R. Finally, zero and one and two thirds. Well, the zero on the x-axis is actually the y-axis. So the, we're going to plot the point directly on the y-axis since the value of x is zero. And then we go up to one and two thirds right here. And we're going to label that point S. On to task 2K, L, and M. It asks what is the distance between E and H, or line segment EH. We have to go from E to H, right there. Well, we can count by thirds. One third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds, five thirds, six thirds, seven thirds, eight thirds. We can label that eight thirds. Or we can change that into a mixed number, which would be two and two thirds. What is the length of HD? We're going to have to go from H to D. So, one-third, two-thirds, three-thirds, four-thirds, five-thirds, six-thirds, seven-thirds. So we can write that as seven-thirds. And that is the same as two and one-third. Would the length of ED be greater than or less than EH plus HD? Well, what's the value of EH plus HD? We'll find that first, so I'm going to add two and two-thirds plus two and one-third and I get the answer of five. So now let's look at ED. Well, what's the relationship between these two? So I'm going to draw some diagrams here. I'll draw these uh, line segments in. Okay, so now I have EH plus HD. So we look at we're looking at the distance of this plus this, and that would be uh, equal to five. And I need to just kind of examine where what the length is of E and D. Well, clearly, the E and D is not nearly as far as the sum of E H and H D. So, E D is less than E. H plus H D. Finally, Jack was absent when the teacher explained how to describe the location of a point on the coordinate plane. Explain to it to him using point J. Well, I'm not going to write out the explanation here, but I am going to first uh, refer to the first number being the X, the X coordinate, and we need to locate J on our coordinate plane, and we need to look at our x-axis along here, and we need to look at where j falls on this vertical line that intersects the x-axis. Since the vertical line that intersects both j and the x-axis is at 3 and 1 third, the value, uh, the x-value for the point j is 3 and 1 third. Next we need to look at the y-axis. We'll start with point j draw a horizontal line, see where it intersects the y-axis. It intersects the y-axis at one-third. So the value for y is one-third. So the ordered pair that describes the location on the coordinate plane of point j equals three and one-third with a comma and one-third. Three and one-third is the value for x. One-third is the value for Y.